Okay, let's take a look at how we can draw maximum and minimum slope lines in Excel so that we can calculate the uncertainty in the slope and the uncertainty in the y-intercept. So we're going to use this technique when we have large error bars, such that our maximum and minimum lines are quite distinct from each other. That means they just don't lie on top of each other. If they maximum and minimum slope lines are very close to each other. If you have small uncertainties, then you're going to use the lines t test in Excel. So in the old method of doing this, what we did was we just looked at the first and last points, which should automatically make you a little bit suspicious, because why aren't you taking into account all of the data? And what you do is you put your error boxes in, and you'd, for your maximum slope line, you'd go from that bottom right-hand corner up to this top, top left-hand corner of the last box. And that would be your maximum slope line. And then you do the same thing from that top left corner of the first box to this bottom right corner of the last box. And that would give you your minimum slope line. And then you could use those to figure out your uncertainty in the slope. Now, of course, there's a little problem with that method because right here you can see that minimum slope line does not lie within the error box of that point. So in fact, we're kind of throwing out some good data when we don't take that into account. And even in this one here, it looks like we're just slightly missing. We should be able to increase that minimum slope line and decrease our uncertainty to get a better estimate of the uncertainty in the slope. In our new method, where we consider all of the error boxes, we're going to start out exactly the same way. In other words, we're going to start out drawing a line from this bottom uh, right-hand corner to this top left-hand corner. And that's going to be our maximum slope line. And then we'll do a similar line for the minimum slope line, going from that top uh, leftmost corner to this bottom rightmost corner. But now what we have to do with both lines is check to see whether they're going through all of the error bars. And the red line, the minimum slope line, is not going through all the error bars. So we're going to lift it up just slightly. So let's lift this up a little bit so we can get it going through all of those error boxes. So now it's going through all the error boxes. And what that's going to mean is that our uncertainty in the slope is going to be a little bit smaller. We're going to be a little bit more accurate. So let's see how this is all done in Excel. OK, here's that same graph that we were looking at earlier. But now we've got it in Excel. Let's see how we would plot the minimum and maximum slope lines using Excel. So the first thing that we're going to do is draw the maximum slope line. So I'm going to go to the Insert menu here. And under Insert, there's a Shapes. And we're going to do a straight line. And we're going to start by going from the two corners. So this is the bottom right corner to the top left corner of the last point. So that's our maximum slope line. And now let's do exactly the same thing for the minimum slope line. There's the minimum slope line. So up to this point, we've done nothing new. Now the next step is new, because what we're going to do is check to see if these lines go through all of the error boxes. Now the red line, the maximum slope line, it's in good shape. It goes through all the error boxes. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. But for the blue line, I'm missing some of the error boxes. So what I'm going to do is shift this up a little bit so that it now goes through all the error boxes. Now, we don't have to be real precise about this. Because remember, these uncertainties are just numbers that tell us if we repeated this measurement a whole bunch of times, then most of the data would fall within the uncertainty range. 60, 70, 80 percent of the data would fall within that uncertainty range. That's all that we mean by the uncertainty. So we don't have to be super precise with uncertainties. Now, what I'm going to do is pick out some nice uh, simple points on each of these lines so that I can make those lines mathematical for Excel. So I'm going to go here to review so I can do a bit of inking. And I'm going to pick uh, this point here, this point here. I'm going to extend that a little bit and take that point right there. And I'm going to take this point here right about here. Okay. Now I'm just going to quickly note what those points are, read them off the graph. This first one is 2.518 or so. And now I'm going to type those numbers in here. So my two maximum points, I'll write the x and y values right here. So it'll be 2.518 in that first row. 
followed by 13 and 87. And then I do the same thing for the minimum points. That's 2.5, sorry, that's 1.5 and 25, followed by 15 and 70, 15 and 80. Okay, so I've put all my data points in. So what I'm now going to do is add these points and make trend lines using those points because that'll give me the equation of the maximum and minimum lines. So what we're going to do is click on, right click on a data point, go to um, select data. Now we're going to add the data for the minimum maximum points. So for first of all, I'm going to call this my max and the x values, they're located right here. The y values, they're located right here and that's okay. We're going to add now the minimum line. So I'm going to add min my x values are located right here and my y values are located right here and I can click on OK and you can't really see them because they're under the lines that were already there so I'm going to get rid of those lines and now I'm going to right click on this data point here and then I'm going to add a trend line and I want it to be linear I'd like to display the equation on the chart and I'll close that down so this one here that's my minimum slope line. Now let's do the same thing for this point here. So I'm going to add a trend line. I want the equation it displayed. I close it off and there's my maximum slope line. So that means that my maximum slope is going to be uh, 6.57. My minimum slope is 4.07. So my minimum y-intercept would be 1.57. My maximum y-intercept would be 18.88. Now we can use those to calculate the uncertainty in the slope and the uncertainty in the y-intercept and of course the way that you would do that and I'll just go over this very quickly the way that you would do that is to say your uncertainty in the slope would simply be that maximum slope which is 6.57 subtract the minimum slope 4.07 and divide that range by 2 and you'll get the uncertainty in the slope to get the uncertainty in the y-intercept same process, your maximum y-intercept was at 18.9. Subtract off the 1.57, divide that by 2, and you'll get the uncertainty in the y-intercept. Now, often what happens is it's impossible to fit a straight line that goes through all of your error boxes. And of course, the first thing you start thinking about then is whether or not you've got an outlier. And there's a few warnings I want to give you about outliers. The first thing is that if you think your outlier is due to a calculation mistake, then what you have to do is redo the calculation. Don't call it an outlier. Redo the calculation. Secondly, if you think that your outlier is due to some sort of procedural problem, you made some sort of error in your procedure while you were making that measurement, then your first option is, of course, to redo the measurement. Go back to the lab and redo the measurement. Now, that's not always possible. So the other thing that you can do is to identify the likely cause of that procedural error. And make sure you do that. Don't just say it's an outlier without giving a cause. Other things to consider. Did you underestimate your uncertainties? Maybe you need to make them a little bigger. Remember what the uncertainty refers to. It's simply a number that gives you a range and that means that if you were to repeat your measurement hundreds of times, then you're expecting about maybe 70% of your measurements to fall within that range. And the other thing to consider is, do you really have a linear relationship? Maybe your data looks something like this. And maybe that's really just part of a square root relationship. So always consider that you might not have a linear relationship. Now, another important consideration is whether or not you should anchor your line of best fit to the origin. And the first thing you've got to do is consider the implications of making that zero, zero measurement. So, for instance, say you're doing a measurement where you're dropping balls from different heights and you're measuring the amount of time it takes for them to hit the ground. Then naturally, if the ball is at zero height, the time should be zero. But you should consider where you're measuring your height to the center of the ball because that would lead to a systematic error. Maybe there's some sort of systematic error in your stopwatch and maybe it jumps ahead by three hundredths of a second. Who knows? 
The second thing that you want to ask yourself is, does the data look like it's going to go back through the origin? It could be that you've got some sort of systematic error that would be very important and very useful to find out. Maybe your data looks like this. And it was caused because all the data was shifted up by the same amount, by some systematic error. And if you were to correct for that systematic error, you'd get this straight line through the origin. So always important to consider whether or not you've got a systematic error there. And then once again, is it truly a linear relationship? And I went through that last example. It might look linear, but really be some sort of square root. So you've got a lot to think about when you're deciding whether or not you should anchor your line of best fit through the origin. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.